my side yet, so I'm just going to give it... Okay, it says recording now. <laughs> <laughs> so let me start the story again. Um, yes. So I was listening to the CBC this morning just because I wanted to know what it's like. And um, I started thinking, do they, actually, do they actually get accent training to sound more Canadian when uh, they go and work for the CBC? Because um, I was listening to CBC Vancouver and nobody in Vancouver sounds this aggressively Canadian. <laughs> It's exaggerated, I think, on the radio because people, t okay, you know how people talk to dogs and babies with like exaggerated, hi, how are you? Mm. These exaggerated contours. People on the radio, it's not that bad, but they talk with exaggerated tones because then it's it's easier for people to kind of listen and pay attention. So you'll probably notice the people who are using radio, the people talking on the radio are using more variations in their vocal tone. Do you notice that? But it's but it's Canadian sounding, so it's like, oh, they're using more vo variations in their vocal tone. Is it more like that? <laughs> <laughs> is it like exaggerated? Is it kind of like loud? Because you said aggressive. Is it loud? Is it like? Well, the one thing that I noticed was because last week we went over the O sound in sorry. The okay. um, weather lady came on and she said, "I'm so sorry to be saying this." <laughs> so sorry <laughs> but, but bear in mind i'm only the messenger <laughs> that's a good one that's a good like practice ends i'm so sorry to be saying this but bear in mind i'm only the messenger <laughs> only because only the she messenger. was she was telling us um that we had the most beautiful week in vancouver now but it's gonna stop this evening and she kept saying the rains are coming and then she uh, then she kept correcting herself saying, is it rain or is it rains is that a plural gloria and gloria makarenko is the most stereotypical <laughs> <laughs> canadian i could just hear she's, it <laughs> she's got uh, she's got a um she's got a show called on the coast coast <laughs> on the coast <laughs> on the coast <laughs> and she gets people to she gets people to ring in and uh, just talk about like very local issues like when i first moved to canada i tried to listen to the cbc a bit just to like get a feel for what people what people are interested in and i realized very quickly that what people on the cbc talk about is not what normal people <laughs> <laughs> often care about yeah it's not the mainstream i would say it's like the <laughs> special interest kind of fascinated in canadian politics kind of thing and with so much other news to consume, do we have energy left over to consume local and Canadian news all the time? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I first moved to Canada, um, uh, she had this big, um, I guess, um, there is a word for when um, journalists uh, get uh, stories. Uh, and I'm trying to think of it. Um, uh, help or do you want do you want hints of what do you want help or hints yes <laughs> does it start with l not sure does it rhyme with greed like a journalist pursuing a lead a lead no i wasn't thinking of lead i was thinking more ah. of um something with an s i think i'm not sure it might not actually have an S at the start. <laughs> Something with S in it, perhaps. A scoop. A scoop. That's so good. Yes. <laughs> scoop. That's perfect. That's a really scoop. Good. Yeah. Uh, because she uncovered that um, Canadian uh, cow's milk had palm oil in it, which made butter harder. Huh. And she butter called it butter harder. Gate. Butter gate. <laughs> no. <laughs> Canadian cow's milk has. Palm oil? Palm oil, yeah. Because the, the feed, um uh the feed had palm oil in it. And then she ran this campaign for like BC farmers to ban uh a, um a feed that contained palm oil and then she had all of these farmers ring up saying, Yeah, but it doesn't really say because you're not uh, because the regulating authority doesn't make manufacturers put it on there. They just have to put that it contains oily substances. It do, they don't need to specify if it's palm oil or not. So we went down a right rabbit hole there. But this this was like the first radio story that I engaged <laughs> with after moving to Canada. Canadian <laughs> farming, yes. I know. I come from a come from farm people. My my dad grew up on a farm, um, a wheat farm in Manitoba. 
Um, makes the butter harder. Can I hear the ERs on those ones? The makes butter the harder. harder. The butter harder. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the R in the first part. Let's take the ER yeah. off of harder. So let's just say it makes the butter hard with R. It makes hard. the butter hard. Now add the ER at the end of harder. It makes harder. the butter harder. Yeah, there you go. So if you can't do both syllables, scale back to one. Do the mm. sound because the R wants to disappear into the D, right? It wants to say mm. it wants to go harder. Mm. So we have to go hard. So we need to pause and do that. Um, harder. Yeah. That's exactly. still like with practicing in my exercises, I've still found the R the most like uncommon sound, if that makes sense. It's just very different from how I would usually speak. With uh, with all the other things that you've given me, that sort of seemed to fall into place. I actually recorded myself doing the sentences, and it was so awkward. But I did <laughs> I did listen to it, and it did got it, it was getting better over um, like it kept getting better over uh, as the week progressed. <laughs> That's great. I love to hear that. And your flap tea on better sounds really nice. Kept getting better, <laughs> and getting perfect on getting too. So the first couple times you listen, it's kind of like okay. You kind of know what you need to to hit, right? Like mm. you need to. So think of those. If we put a pause before the R or after the R, think of those as like stop signs as you're reading. Mm -hmm. So you can put like a period or mark it or something. Um, I did something else with another dialogue for a student where I did find and replace, and so I replaced all the R's like in that position, like in hard. I mm -hmm. replaced them all with an underscore so that each time he was reading, he had to stop at that part and go. Actually, this person's doing a British accent, so he had to stop at the part and not do the R sound. <laughs> so, um, like, temperature. We wouldn't want to say temperature, right? Temperature mm -hmm. for British, right? So, temperature for Canadian, if you want to keep those R's in. Um, so, think of those R's as, like, landing places, and you kind of have to hit that mouth shape. Er. Flare your lips and bunch your tongue like this. Terms, you kind of go er. Er. yeah so it's gonna feel kind of weird because you're pushing your tongue meat kind of to the back teeth so mm -hmm. that it can be braced and the mm -hmm. tongue has this like brace so that it can like move freely like this and that's how you yeah do that. i can feel that <laughs> yeah i'm so then, glad because it's in the back of the mouth but it's like the front of the tongue is doing stuff too so it's hard yeah and then what i sometimes <laughs> observed as i was doing the sentences it it, it, it tried not to go back there so i tried to stay forward and do an r at the front which yeah. makes it sound special <laughs> i wanted to do an art front not english at all <laughs> yeah did it start to kind of kind of get yeah. Low and deep? yeah your tongue's just searching for the right place it's kind mm -hmm. of like uh, learning a new move you have to memorize the movement so you have to do it a certain number of times first kind of purposefully um like with running when you first start to learn to run you have to do like stuff with your arms and legs right mm -hmm. and you kind of have to like you see some people that have just started running and you can tell they're new at it because they're the way that they're kind of moving their bodies, right? Um, inefficiently. <laughs> so can you tell when you see an inefficient runner? Like they have an accent on their running? Yeah. Um, and you also get runners who um, have, I guess it's comparable to a speech impairment maybe, where they've learned to run in a very unhealthy way because they, um, <laughs> but like I, I like one one example is I saw somebody fl flap their hands like this rather than just yeah. actually taking the entire arm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great sentence. I want you to say that. I sometimes observe. Oh, sorry, no, not that sentence. <laughs> you get runners that have learned to run in a very unhealthy way. How many R's are there? So I'm gonna go in the R. I'm gonna put a stop oh. sign underscore have learned are you in the document <laughs> i'm in the document yes sorry okay by the way i'm writing sentences down so there's ours that for sure we don't need to change because they're like run and they're at the beginning right mm -hmm. but when we get to very like learn to run in a very unhealthy way very. those are the r's that we're gonna have like stop signs at yeah. you get you know runners. i think one thing that i need to do next week is to just try and do this whenever i speak because <laughs> That'll teach me to just do it naturally. <laughs> It'll show up in your speech after, yeah, it, it will sh it will show mm. up in your speech. And it, it, it sometimes shows up accidentally with particular words now. So it'll be, when I say water, for example, 
that's it, it, that's just incorporated. Whereas with other things, it hasn't yet. <laughs> Water's super common, so it's gonna do those sounds. The kind of uh, frequency effects. More frequent words will get changed mm. potentially faster. But earlier learned words might get changed later because they're kind of crystallized. So earlier learned oh. words like that, there, these, those, either, other, those are crystallized because those are grammatical chunks that connect other mm. thoughts. Those I hear you doing the D for the TH all the time. So that's why I have a TH exercise. Mm. But those kind of change, those are harder to change because they're, they're grammatical chunks. Like I said, they don't carry that much meaning. So what, what I'd like you to do, actually, I'll give you a choice. Would you like to work on this TH sound and do some pairs and sentences? Or would you like to work on a vowel sound today since we haven't talked about vowels at all just to mix it up? Uh, let's do, uh, I'd, I'd rather get, so I think I need to, I think I know what I need to do about the R. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's do the THs because when I do the, um, when I concentrate on it, I do it right. So if I if if I do your minimum minimum min, minimal <laughs> minimal pair exercises, it's really easy because I hear the difference and I do it consciously. But then when I drop into unconscious, I just don't do it. <laughs> Hard to monitor that flow. That's like kind of mm. that free flowing freestyle kind of thing. Um, you have to build up this. A painter has to paint still life before they paint something from their head, mm -hmm. right? A dancer has to learn dance steps before they freestyle. A rapper mm -hmm. has to learn bars before they freestyle. So you're gonna have to, you're, you're like a dancer, a rapper, a painter. You're like, you know, learn these skills, these strokes, these movements first, and then they will kind of percolate up through your normal speech. So don't worry too much now about your conversations and stuff like this happening. Mm -hmm. Your system is gonna test things. So it'll come up with kind of, oops, you might say these instead of these once in a while, because mm -hmm. your system is like, does the S go here? Or does the mm -hmm. So that's a normal part of it. It's like a, when kids are learning their first or second language and they say, I goed outside instead of I went <laughs> outside. It's like, that's totally a good, a good guess because it's an overcorrection. Mm -hmm. It's they're, they're doing things too well. <laughs> they haven't <laughs> learned exceptions. So open up, if you're in the document, open up this, it's, it's the worksheet, this uh -huh. TH postcard and postcard. this is going to be a whole bunch of various stimuli so we don't have to go through it all but what i kind of want to check in do you think you have any issues with thr like saying three do you ever say like tree or um three i i think if i concentrate on it three is fine but Rift, if i true? don't if i just do it naturally i would mm -hmm. usually say free with an f with an F, okay. Mm. Uh, that's why I, that, I'm asking because I want to start here. So let me hear this line. Actually, do you want to model first, or do you want to go on your own without my example? Let me let me do it first because otherwise I'll just copy whatever you do, and then, <laughs> then if, which is I'll, helpful. <laughs> it, yeah, it, I mean, uh, but we want to see where you're at. But it'll make me feel less like there's something to <laughs> to yeah. work on. <laughs> we'll do a bit of both. Uh, just so you get both practice. So go ahead with these ones. And I'll say them after go, just so we can do go, go top down. to bottom. Go down, yeah. Okay. Uh through um no wait. Uh, through oh, this is really through. Like this? Through? Through. 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 You're probably through. used to using F, right? Do you say Yeah, through? yeah, yeah. I'm very used to using F for this Let's, one. Instead of this movement. Let's go from here to teeth. It's less likely your teeth can touch your lip, which is your first move okay. that you were doing. Through. Through. Yeah. And try oh. that moment. <laughs> you have to pull the, that's the tricky thing with the R is that you're doing this like through. Yeah. Through. through. Yep. Oh my God, that's okay. <laughs> You haven't said that one like that before. Yeah. Let me hear. Thrill. Thrill. And you keep going on your own. Three. Yeah. Through. 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 Yep. Bribe. Perfect. Rust. That's a good exercise, by the way. Birth rate. Whoop! I heard an F. 
So oh, let's just say birth. birth. Yeah. Just birth. Birth. Then rate. Birth rate. Now try T H R A T E. Rate. R, R A T H R A. Um, rate. Nice. Now rate. do those syllables. Birth rate. Birth rate. You see how I'm pushing the T R to go into the R? The mm -hmm. eh, T H to the R? Because we like to lead into syllables with a consonant. Mm -hmm. So it's like birth rate. Birth rate. Birth. birth. <laughs> nice. No, you did it. Birth rate. Nice. Second column. Uh, you got this. You got this. Blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you need to once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Reset. Reboot. Rift. Rift. Perfect. Throttle. Threat. Let me hear the story. Throat. Throttle. Let me hear a dull. Throttle. Throttle. Yeah. Throttle. Uh, like threat. water bottle. Yeah. Throat. Good. Thrash. Oh, I think your R might be touching the roof. Just yes, yes, it thrash. is. Thrash. 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 Yep. Good. Red. Yep. Rob. Good. I've never thought about this so hard in my yeah. life. Yeah, the TH is really quiet. Can you can you make it a little bit louder? Throb. Throb. So push air against this. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing the full word, let's just yeah. We're gonna push air against this like this constriction. Sorry, it made sound of kind of like a farty sound there. I didn't mean that. So this has to be about as loud as. Yeah, it's more just air. So let me hear again. Thrash. 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 Nice. Good R. What about thread? Thread. Throat. Throat. Nice. Throb. Rob. You got it. And then the bottom word? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> split it up. To split up the syllables. Yeah. First syllable, fourth. Fourth. Nice. And now let's say thrite. Right. right. Yep. It's a little bit weird. It's not even a word, but now forthright. Forthright. Um, Good. It's, it's tough. It's yeah. a lot going fourth, on. <laughs> forthright. Good. I'm going to highlight the ones that are especially difficult because then mm -hmm. you can cut. We're going to cut and paste them into your Google Doc. Mm -hmm. So we can practice. Just practice the most difficult ones. Mm hmm. Let me hear the third. This is the most difficult one. It has more two syllable words. Okay. Yeah. Um, throne. Throne. Yeah. Throne. Good. Throne. Um, oh, okay. Through out. Good. You can connect the two with a W. Through out. Ah, through out. Yeah. Threefold. Perfect. See, these seem easier, and I don't know why. Maybe the word three is so common. Um, threshold. Yeah, fresh. Try and do the H sound too, actually. Threshold. Okay. Threshold. Perfect. That's excellent. Threatened. That ending, I didn't even have to say anything. You did that end, the inner end ending. Like, <laughs> mount, like mountain, like Manhattan we talked about. Mm. Threatened. Chef's kiss. That was perfect. They they are the sorts of things that feel way more natural. Like um, t like oh, th yeah. like when practicing, I've been noticing like r and the th. Like I need to properly concentrate on them. Like the other stuff that we went through sort of then happens when I do those. Uh, like when I do those things, yeah. it happens. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't, <laughs> they don't. Um, okay. Uh, we're at um, threatened. Uh, no, um, three quarters. Nice. Now let's split this up. Then. Is it more quarters? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say it in a couple different ways, and you can mm -hmm. you can grab the one you like. Okay. The one the way I usually say it, I usually say it thinking of like. So I'm not gonna say qua. Mm -hmm. I usually say it like how I say quartz. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying core, and then because I'm rounding, it sounds a bit like the qua, right? Quartz. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quarter. So I say quarter like C O R D E R. Quarter. Uh -huh. Quarter. But you can say 
quarter. Mm -hmm. Quarter. Just be aware that not as many people are doing this anymore. People are like quartz, quarter, you know, quarter, half, three quarters. They're just saying quarter because the OR shape does the like for mm. you. So okay. this is like a changing sound. It's like a moving target. Mm -hmm. um, we don't say kit. We say quit still. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just for quart and quarter. We're saying mm -hmm. quart. Mm -hmm. So do you want to say it like that? Three quarters? Quarters? Um, three quarters. Nice. That was perfect. <laughs> Co copying yeah. is always easier. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Simon I'm says. Thrown again. Yeah. Thrown. No, I said that with an F, I think. Thrown. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get that tongue. The Throne. tongue that doesn't have to be too hard for her, but yeah, like, but, but see I, how forward it needs to be. Try that. Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking I, I'd rather just overdo it a bit for now, so that I can feel the like physical difference, and then yeah. I can always adjust that later. Um, That's what I would say. It's like you can teach this class yourself. It's like <laughs> a pendulum effect. So you're gonna do a bit exaggerated, just like with the radio. We exaggerate our voices on the radio <laughs> so that people kind of sink into them so do that at first that's totally a good strategy and then just remember for when it does show up in your speech it'll be gentler mm -hmm. so did we have thrown already because there's thrown yeah we had thrown just say both of those they sound this, the exact same thrown 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 nice hey that's perfect because you know i sometimes you'll pe hear people say the second one as throw in and they're not doing the wn so i try and remind them that it's the exact same pronunciation as thrown so that that's really nice you fit that into one syllable thrown. oh you reminded me of something that happened ages <laughs> ago in english class when i first learned english because i was convinced it was um uh i'm trying i'm trying to think of how i said it um uh Oh, it's gone now. But but I think I had a really weird way of saying although. Uh -huh. I I think I think I said all thought or something because I recognize like I I basically split it apart and I wasn't gonna believe that. <laughs> yeah, it looks like thought, but T, mm. T O U G H T is so many different. Mm. It can be like off, af, uff, o. Mm. It can be so many different things. And then we sometimes change the spelling of them. So I'm just writing down birth rate, mm -hmm. birthright, and arthritis, just because I think those are good practice ones. Arthritis. Nice. Perfect. Um, birthright. Was thrown a good one? For what, three quarters? Thrown was a good one. Three quarters was a good one for the qua as well. Good. I'll put that here. I'll put like orders like that and so i mean you've know. got the you've got the document link anyway in case i want to just go through all of them yes it's it's available to other students so don't edit it like oh. don't take anything out of it i don't have edit access anyway so oh, okay. i can only read <laughs> okay <laughs> but feel free to copy and paste as much of it into your document as is helpful mm. that's awesome you're sounding great on this th i think you just need to know where the placement is and to practice it but it, this is everywhere the sound Mm. everywhere it's the most common sound in english so that's why this and the r it's like those are the two like parts of your accents that accent that i would um, i think that's maybe really the thing to pay attention to during this week both the r's and the t uh, and the th's because um they come up so much in speech and i'm sure my partner will hate it but that's a good way of um that's a good way of telling that I'm doing it right. <laughs> yeah, that you're working on it, that it's like, mm. it's, it's part of your daily life, kind of. It's part of your routine now. You're kind of yeah. dialed into the accent thing. This is good. You kind of see, you now you see the matrix, right? You kind of see. Oh yeah, oh, no, wow. it's, uh, you've opened <laughs> up a complete, you've opened up a completely new world to me. It's so much like you, it's almost like the matrix. You sort of swallow the pill and then, <laughs> you wake up the next day and you start paying attention to stuff that you weren't paying attention to before yeah <laughs> totally that's that's how i felt about it too i just didn't know mm -hmm. about it before and the more i learned the more i realized the less i knew before the dunning-kruger effect 
I think how, how the the less you know about a topic, the more you think that you know more about it. I think that's. Yeah. I'm probably doing the Dunning Kruger effect on the Dunning Kruger effect explanation, but, <laughs> but, but I do want to. Oh, sorry. Go oh on. no, sorry. Sorry. Um, uh, my uh, my partner really enjoys telling people. Partner really enjoys telling people. So that. Well, it's still recording me. Frozen. Let's just okay. Oh shoot! Ah! Ah! Thank goodness! <laughs> it froze. Yeah, my home internet went. Ah. <laughs> My home internet went. Okay, you were in the um, middle of saying, my partner really enjoys telling people. I want to hear the rest of that sentence. He really enjoys telling people. So my partner really enjoys telling people that I'm doing accent classes because he wants to see people's reactions. And what I've noticed is, um, so <laughs> maybe the strongest reaction that I got from somebody, uh, from somebody is, why do you want to sound more stupid? <laughs> Yeah, people always have those. Why would you do that? Why would you change that? You know, it's like asking someone who started going to the gym why they want to get into shape. It's personal. <laughs> it's a personal, a personal it pursuit personal. for your own satisfaction. Yeah. Uh, but but actually, like he has been very disappointed because most Canadians just go, oh yeah, that's fine, whatever. Uh, whereas <laughs> Europeans will be a lot more like protective of their like heritage. So like when he tells people back in England, they're like, why? <laughs> that is interesting. It's 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 part of your in group. It's an identification with your in group of your culture. So for someone like with an accent, um, like. How does your partner's accent like what kind of reactions do people have like oh where are you from like that kind of thing like let's say you're out and about so do people comment on both of your accents if you're out together? they do comment on both of our accents because but if they compare his if we show up mm -hmm. together it's interesting because he doesn't have a stereotypically um sudden uh standard uh, british accent like southeastern standard british yeah. accent um so uh people will compare i guess people will see us together and they'll compare his accent to my accent and then they'll go oh he's from somewhere in the uk so he must be from somewhere in the uk so it's by association um oh. and um, with with him, they don't usually know that he's from North Wales because he also doesn't have a stereotypically southern Welsh accent. He sounds more like somebody from Liverpool. So people will go, um, "Oh yeah, you're from somewhere in the UK." And then he says Wales, and then what he really hates is if people go, "Oh, I'm Welsh," when uh, like the last Welsh person in their family tree was like four generations ago. <laughs> yep, he doesn't totally. appreciate that. But then <laughs> I've completely let. I've completely land into this, whereas I go, um, I'm Italian and, <laughs> and Austrian and I've got a British passport. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool, actually. It's like you're collecting like stamps on your passport of life of language. It's oh, wonderful. Yeah, no, I, I, I've completely land into the American understanding of, of heritage, whereas he's very protective of his European uh white british northern identity <laughs> hey, <that's laughs> which is why like, he finds it a lot more he's he's got a lot more of like attached biases to this whole like doing accent classes thing <laughs> because in britain it's a loaded topic do it to lose their accent yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I've had people, well, Canadians want to have an, a British accent, and I think their friends and family think that's a bit weird, but that's personal if they want. <laughs> <laughs> what you say completely is very British sounding. It's not quite South African. It's not that bad. It's not completely. So how do you think <laughs> I want it to sound? Completely. Com com completely. completely. Yeah, because you said complete. Dumb all think the of a, like, basically turn all the T's into D's completely. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It's it's like you pinch that T and go to the L Y completely. Mm -hmm. Completely, yeah. Um, and the the com because it's not like think of the word competition. You hear how com mm. has like a full, but this is complete, complete. So mm -hmm. compa competition versus completely. So the the common competition is bigger than the com and completely. Yeah. Mm, completely. Uh, so, completely. Let me hear you I say. I see. Yeah. The O's. The O. Mm. The O, yes. So let me hear you say the verb and now the noun. And I can remind you, but yeah, let me hear those. Contract. Contract. Yeah. It's beautiful. I didn't even have to say anything. You've got the syllables perfect contract for a noun i signed the contract versus contract oh my friend contracted COVID or whatever contract mm. contract so do you hear how can contract contract mm. so that's a big and small syllable that we haven't talked about yet but you have a feel for it already i can tell you have this i i cheated because i just thought of bonnie henry on the radio earlier today <laughs> where she was talking about how there is a new wave of co covid <laughs> <laughs> Yep, I never stop. I'm still I still wear a respirator in stores because I have people in my life with autoimmune disease and I really don't want to get them sick. I would mm. feel so bad if I got my friends with, with auto, autoimmune you diseases. Know, specifically <laughs> for like grocery stores where you buy food and food's like out in the open. I, yeah. I feel like they should have just continued making it mandatory for people to at least bear like something on your face. Like it doesn't have to be a respirator or something, <laughs> but just I... <laughs> Uh, like... I, I'm still a bit like, I, particularly <laughs> when I go on a plane, I at least wear one until like the um, all the filters and all the air conditioning comes on. Um, mm. But like with having been with having been to Europe a few times now, like in Europe, nobody wears anything ever anymore. Um, oh. So I've kind of got a bit more lenient on it. Um, but yeah, I, I continued wearing masks <laughs> for a very long time. I. I <laughs> Yeah, I'm. But yeah, but yeah I don't, I don't like, care what other people do. I'm like, good for them. <laughs> when other people are like comfortable, whatever. I'm just like, sorry, I got. Yeah, you need you need to feel life. comfortable. But and like yeah, but and and luckily like like luckily there are good masks now that you can buy that actually protect the wearer as well as everyone around you. And it's like with the respirators that sort of actually checks out. So that's that's good. <laughs> yeah. I'm at the gym with, with the respirator even, it's still, and I'm like the only one doing it, but I'm just like, whatever, better safe than sorry. It's just like a small thing that I can do. Um, but I've also, I have a lot of people with chronic illness in my life, so I, I understand. Mm. Um, you said continued, continue in a con kind of way. I just wanted to say, you said, I continue to put a mask on in, in whatever. Let me hear kin. <laughs> I'm still working you, even though it's like mm. less officially, uh, that, the lessons. Um, yeah, I wanted to check in. You, you, you have work and stuff that you have to get to. This is my work, so I'm. I feel I'm happy to continue doing it, but um, I, mean, I don't want I'm, to keep you long. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm still, I'm still off today, so uh, I've got time. Oh yeah, you just said that. And my, where did my memory go? Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow I'm unofficially because this is recorded. I'm totally going back on Monday, and nobody email me tomorrow. <laughs> but not, right? I'm unofficially going back tomorrow so that I can respond to all of my messages and everything. Um, That's but yeah, let's do, let's do continued. I, I'm in, I'm enjoying this, by the way. Like, we... <laughs> yeah, me too. And I'm I'm gonna upload them. I'm excited for people to see them. I have a friend that does video editing, and I'm gonna get help with. All I want to do is put a little blur on the bottom so it covers up your name and all like it's because it's there's like it says Daniel Stalker. I just wanted to cover up like your your full name and then there's just like 
Mm -hmm. That's all. I literally want to add a bar of blurring to it just for that. Oh, and I just said it, so now I'm going to have to edit the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self, edit this video. I'm going to go through them and edit, like, edit it a little bit, right? Um, yeah. Anywho. And I guess you'd want to do an intro <laughs> explaining what it is and then maybe an outro as well. I'm not sure. Like, Yeah. I want to see I what people are, are people interested in watching a full lesson that's like this because there's like talking and stuff but that's part of the lesson it's always been part of accent training is the mm. conversation part because that's where you use your speech the most so um yeah. i'm don't i'm not i haven't forgotten about that i just wanted to let you know that that's i'm still excited to put that that's put that okay. out there I no, want that's fine. Watch. it's worthwhile it's um the things that you're learning about um are like some of the most difficult things for other speakers so yeah, yeah so it's we'll good it's a good people, model a good example we'll see if people watch it <laughs> <laughs> so let me hear continue Con continued <laughs> that's perfect so words that start with calm and con you can do this reduction to them what if mm. you were going to say I think it's potentially just an overcorrection that I taught myself to do because I was trying to sound more proper when it's really not something that people really do. <laughs> I think in the UK people do this and in, in South Africa, like I said, is jokingly, but they'll be like, um, continue, you're going to continue, like South African, mm. completely, you're going to completely continue versus mm. um, going to continue completely yeah it sounds more old-fashioned for a british accent to have like the full continue completely um because the poem mm. is like replacing those more nowadays can you think of any other words that you use often like this word this is four syllables this word that i've written down <laughs> nice. the, Split it up. with the with this word um i need to channel um we were in disneyland <laughs> <laughs> and the like most stereotypical so i had not been to florida before it was my first time in the us and we were at a, at a conference um work perfect con and conference. we sit down for breakfast and the most stereotypically american lady shows up and she goes you just take whatever you want and then <laughs> and then i only picked up like yogurt and like a smoothie and stuff and then it goes around to paying and she goes I'll only charge you for the carne nano, despite you taking, <laughs> despite you taking the smoothie, which is part of the American breakfast. But I'll let you off. <laughs> I like that you remember this exchange because that's good practice. Yeah. This is definitely when people kill the cheese in if they're American, right? They say continental, right? You don't mm -hmm. have to. I'm just gonna see if I can make my an internet less choppy. Okay, that seems to be okay. Continental. It might be my side as well because um, earlier when I cut out my, um, something's wrong with the router and I didn't want to go to check it. So I'm currently on my phones. Maybe if I prop it up over here. Ah, clever, oh, thank you for, I wouldn't even think to do that, honestly. That's really clever. <laughs> oh, my on students a, are so on smart. A Mac, he, he, <laughs> So my, my personal laptop is a Mac and um, it just suggests it. You don't even need to think about it. You just go into like Wi-Fi settings and it goes, do you want to switch to your phone? And it just does it. That is so cool. My MacBook didn't do that. So I didn't know about that. But <laughs> so Continental, let me hear. You've been to the UK. You've seen these signs. Oh, oops, 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 sorry. You've seen these signs. Or at least it's they're in Scotland, where I've been. I haven't been to the. I haven't been to the yeah, yeah. <laughs> How would you say that in an American accent? Not necessarily Canadian. Twenties plenty. <laughs> Perfect. Exactly. So that's a good example of how we could say continental. You could say continental. You could say continental. You could say continental with both T's, or you can say continental with no T's. Because they all come mm. after an N. And T's after N's because N and T are in the same place of articulation, just above the teeth. Na, ta, 
because they're in the same place, our tongue's like, ah, oh, we did the T with the N, it's fine. And then even though there's no sound for it, you still did mm. the movement. So that's why 20 is just the same as 20, but it's missing that push off for the T, right? 20, mm. 20, 20. 20. Isn't that, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the 20 is plenty is only Scotland. Um, is it okay? <laughs> just the road authority is separate. Um, I, I like I used to have this job where I had to drive all around the UK to different customer sites, and um, mm. yeah, there, there's quite a few particularities around how they lay out roads in Scotland and what the signs are. There's quite a few differences. Wow, particularities that is a really good word, it has two particularities it has two r's Oops. you might notice people don't really say the first one it's not like oh particular mm -hmm. it's like particular right P particular so you can get away with particular if you want particular oh that's particular mm -hmm. does it sound uneducated that's particular 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 like the word do you say surprise or surprise because they're both fine and the spelling to say surprise mm. but you can say surprise without the r yeah uh, i think i say surprise good so there are I'm some r's we kind of skim over right, right now. yeah surprise mm -hmm. <laughs> how do you say it <laughs> <laughs> yeah because a lot of people say it like how they say supplies, surprise, supplies, and supplies doesn't have an R in the beginning. So mm. surprise. So these are some of the things we kind of skim over, right? When we say temperature, we don't say temperature, we say tempa, temperature. So these are the R's that you can skip over. Yeah, if you say temperature, that's, that's, that makes you sound very like oldie weldy, like 1800s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're checking the temperature, like old fashioned. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, we kind of, we, we got like, there's several shiny objects to kind of, to look at here. Like, ooh. <laughs> um, but you're getting, it's, it's the matrix. You're getting like deeper in the matrix and you're seeing like, oh, this NT thing, mm -hmm. like this con con uh, continental. The T won't disappear mm. if it's a stress syllable, though. Like, think of continue. We're not saying continue, right? Mm. Continue. So there's a rule for these mm -hmm. T's disappearing. They have to be on unstressed syllables. Mm -hmm. Same with the flap T, like the flap T going to a, a D sound. It's usually an unstressed syllable after, like better, getting. If you were going to say um, detain, the T remains because tain has a stress detain mm -hmm. you would say you wouldn't say detain right mm -hmm. yeah versus dating i'm using a d there dating mm -hmm. detain but the stress is different yeah so i think you've kind of locked in on that this this lesson you've but locked in on how I, stress like i yeah so i think the way i can explain this to myself is does it change the meaning because if you do uh what was the other example you just did you did dating where it doesn't make a difference and then you oh detain detain, detain yeah so if you said detain yeah. that that sounds like it's a different word altogether like it 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 doesn't re it doesn't retain <laughs> the um the me it doesn't retain the meaning anymore because you can do con in endel mm -hmm. and you'd still know what it is <laughs> and i know that's, that's true <laughs> it's not a very scientific way of explaining it but you I, I guess that's a way to prove it out um if you know english like as long as you know english well enough if you don't know what the word means and you <laughs> then you can just take whatever d's out it doesn't make a difference <laughs> You've hit on a in, in linguistics something called allophones, allophony. So can mm. can two things kind of alternate? So if dating can be dating and dating, that those are all allophonous, but detain doesn't have an allophone mm. because you can't change it, it changes the meaning. So that oh, allophone so thing when, is like when in Canada we talk about allophones, that's people who speak <laughs> English and French. <laughs> 
Actually, that's a good one. <laughs> that's perfect. I love that. <laughs> um, yeah, because in, yeah, <laughs> anglophones. <laughs> <laughs> because um, two languages that the country cares about. <laughs> that's right. Um, so you hit on that. You like you have this like innate kind of sense of like this linguistic this linguistic rule. So it's probably because of the exposure that you've had to so mm. many different languages, different rules. You kind of kind of lock in on those constraints. Yeah, because I need I need to make sense of them. Right, I need to make sense of them in a way where I can remember. Whereas I've always struggled to remember rules. So I I really struggle. I, I'm doing Duolingo for Spanish now, and the way it's trying to explain to me how to do like it it. I, I mean, I know I can I can read the rule, and I'll go. Oh yeah, I need to conjugate it this way because it's this kind of a verb, and then. This is the person, and then some. Sometimes you can take the person that, uh, and that, that just really doesn't make sense. Like, <laughs> I need, uh, I need to like do it enough times for me to learn what sounds right and what doesn't sound right, and then, and then I'll I'll do it correctly most of the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking. I'm writing down some of these things that you say because they're, I think they're insightful. And then later, when you're looking through your document, you can be like, ah, I said that. You said that and you can use it as a practice sentence <laughs> if you want to be really nerdy need to understand and internalize the rule to learn what sounds right and what doesn't that's wonderful um i just want to check in and see if there's any um any particular kind of i'm oh, sorry about that hold on one second To close my bathroom door. So, what do you feel is the most kind of important thing for you to focus on, for example, for the next week? Keeping in mind you're going back to work and, and have this kind of plate full of things to worry about. What do you want to focus on? What should I ask I, you? About I week? think I should do. Um, no, I, I think I should do uh, THs and Rs. Mm. And just build them into speech. For sure. Um, if pairs are too easy, do you want some sentences to do? Uh, sentences would be good. And I also feel like I should just be super intentional about building them into my normal speech. Um, and like, I talk so much on conference calls, it'll be easy to build them, uh, to build them in. Like people will be very confused, but I don't care. <laughs> It's up, it's your right <laughs> to to learn using those using your my speech. I own it. <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna put in some sentences. I just want to make sure I don't accidentally delete something from this th worksheet, just because it's a bit more fun. Here we are. What I would do as well, since this is a th worksheet, but also just look at the r sounds as well, and you can just. Like you don't want to mm -hmm. say I lost my purse in per. Well, maybe you do actually to have an Australian accent. But for instance, if you're looking at the document, I lost my purse in Perth. You can highlight the R's for yourself in advance, either by mm -hmm. bolding or underlining. Okay, those are those are some sentences, and I have three more sentences. So if you did these sentences, let's say once a day, thrifty feed price. <laughs> would you say? Uh, I was just reading one of the sentences. Oh. Um, <laughs> the sentences don't have to make the sense. They have to be <laughs> the thrifty feed price. <laughs> yeah, where's that one? A leather leader thanked the thrifty thief thrice at thirteen thirty-three p.m. <laughs> some of them don't make any sense but the point is just to give you, you good practice tongue exercises, so that when these kind of though. things come up exactly like do you think any of them will be difficult you want to um, try a couple yeah let's try a couple uh you highlighted this one um i lost um i lost my purse in perth 
straight past the mossy Braithwaite pathway. <laughs> Braithwaite is the last name. Mossy, please see oh. Ma. Mossy. Mossy. Nice. It was very American. The mossy, the mossy Braithwaite pathway. Nice. That sounds great. The mossy Braithwaite pathway. <laughs> What about, let me hear you. I'll do it first, just so you can copy me. A leather this leader. Thanks. <laughs> I know. I make these up to be kind of evil. I'm like trying to make people <laughs> cause errors. A leather leader. I'm glad to bring you joy. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, I'm like, hey, nah, like whip, like leather and whip, like, but with speech. <laughs> Judas speech. I'm Judas speech. Um, a leather leader thanked the thrifty thief thrice at 13:33 p.m. I that one. A leather, a, a leather leader. Leather. Uh, let me try again. Yeah, yeah. Let me try again. A leather leader thanked the thrifty thief thrice at. 13.33 p.m. 13. 13. Nice. 3 p.m. 13.33 p.m. You can flap 30, right? 30, you can flap that. But you can't flap 13 because mm -hmm. teen is the stress syllable. 13, mm -hmm. like detain. So let me hear 13.33. Thirteen thirty-three. Perfect. It sounded really good. For thrice. I want to make sure you're getting the tongue up before it hits the roof of your mouth. Thrice. Mm -hmm. Thrice. Perfect. Oh, that sounds so good. So if you get to thrice and you accidentally say thrice with a th say rice mm -hmm. and then say thrice. So uh, rice. Uh. And then thrice. Thrice like that makes sense so if it ever gets like if you ever have an error or an off target pronunciation scale it back make it easier take away the syllable or take away parts of the word um or push some of the words apart into like break them apart these are the kind of strategies you can use if you're going over them and you're like oh shoot i lost that like oh I sh how do i say 13 again like um kind of Mark, you can mark it up if you if that's helpful. Some some of my students printed everything out and like highlighted stuff. <laughs> like, um, I understand. I'm kind of old school. I like books. I'm okay. Um, I'm okay <laughs> just looking at it. Um, mm -hmm. I, because yeah. I look at it and then I like the way I do it is I look at it and then I remember what we went over. So I don't necessarily need to mark it in any way. Um, good, good. You know what I'm looking for. Okay, I'm just going to get you to do one more. And then I don't want to put any more new information in your brain because there's enough information. We've today. got through a lot. <laughs> well, we did enough information. It's just, it's just R's and TH's right now. That's the only thing you really have to worry about in your speech. Mm -hmm. you know? um, the other stuff will pop up and you'll be like, oh, yeah, continue versus like continental or stuff like that. So. Yeah, I think that'll go along with as we do the vowels. I think mm. that'll start like that'll be fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. I'm looking forward <laughs> to that actually. Um, I was looking for uh, because you put the coming up. the sneak peek of what's coming next of what's coming yeah. next. Um, I enjoyed that. So that's that, that going to be lots lesson. of fun to do. <laughs> so I, I book the next lesson because they're like, oh, I have this to learn about still. So um, that's my teaser. I just want to get you to say this sentence. Do it without me first. I want to just hear where you're at. Okay. With some of those okay. THRs. The three toed sloth bathed, bathed <laughs> the mouse and batter. Bat Batted? Bat you can batted? say batted. You can say batted if you want. Or batted. batted. What does yeah. that what what does that word mean? Um, batted. Baseball bat. Mm. Or like this. 
Yeah, I know I that. Sloth. I know Actually, that. sloths are slow, so it would be like this. Let me take it from the top. <laughs> <laughs> the the three toed sloth bathed the mouse and batted the moth. Beautiful. Moth. moth. Yeah. That sounded great. So this is kind of the this is the technique. It's not glamorous. Mm -hmm. It's like a conditioning in the gym. It's like, ah, gotta get it done, you know. <laughs> and I'll try and work I, I'll try and work this stuff into speech more as well. So I think that you give us some progress for next week. I'm gonna book yeah. The next one tomorrow when I'm at work and I can see you who all has got a calendar and booked a bunch of meetings. Um are you yeah. uh, uh are you available either Good Friday or Easter Monday? Or are you taking those off? Uh on Friday. I'm available Friday. Yes. It should be uh -huh. on the cal it should be on the calendar. Oh wait. I might have to put some. Oh yeah, I'll see it on the calendar anyway. Uh, I was just, I was just. If you can't asking. find something, let me know because I have. You can select something so that it presents fewer appointments, so that there's like less choice, so that people aren't overwhelmed when they booked me. But I have more availability than what shows. It's just like an algorithm to. Oh, okay. You do. Do you know what I mean? Like instead of yeah, my yeah. calendar just um, showing all these slots, it just like gives a few options for people. So. Let me know if you don't find one, and then I will like manually book you into the calendar. Yeah, yeah since, I've got a similar um, booking tool where I can say I want this much buffer, so um, it builds that in. Totally. Like, thanks, technology. <laughs> I used to do it all. Like, <laughs> I used to all do all my booking by myself. This is a lot, a lot easier. It's nice. Well, it was great talking to you today. I always like learn. So that's great. I always, uh, I always laugh. <laughs> and, uh, live, laugh, laugh. It's always lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Exactly. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, see you next week. Thank you so much, Thank Alice. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Recording stop.